shouldn't smoke that. It might stunt your growth. All right, you got it. Go ahead, smoke it. Uh, I'm saving it for off to dinner. Dinner? You mean you got a place for a handout? Sure, over at the Friendly. The Friendly what? Ain't you ever heard of the Friendly Mission? Huh. You sure can get some swell soup there and no questions asked. Yeah? Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, pal. Well, there it is. Ain't it pretty? Just like I told you. Gorgeous. And the guy who runs it is a soft touch. Yeah? Wouldst thou partake? Wouldst. See the guy handing out the soup? Yeah. He's the guy who runs the joint. I'll give you a personal introduction. Gee. What's that, buddy? Where you from? Uh, from? Oh, I'm a transient. Oh, okay. Oh, good evening. I see you brought a needy friend with you tonight. Yeah, he's a pedestrian from Pitboy. You're very welcome, my friend. Here you will find food for your body, as well as comfort for your troubled mind. Yeah, but could I have some soup? Of course, my friend. What happened to your hand? Oh, that's nothing. I just hurt it a little bit. Oh, just the same. We better take care of it. Miss Melvin, here's a patient for you. Yeah, but what about the soup? Never mind. There's plenty of soup here. I... Yeah, but... I'll just change your bandage for you. Yeah, but I... I... Oh, it'll keep. Oh, you're in good hands. Make it cold. Take a bowl of that soup, if you don't mind. Certainly. Just be seated. I'll take it off. See, the guy that runs this place sure is one swell guy. Yes, he is. Most places you go to, all they want to do is save your soul. Mr. Wagner realizes a man can get awfully hungry just doing nothing. You bet he can. Have another bowl? No, thanks. Then what about a smoke? A nice cigar. Thanks. Come on, my friend. Follow me. Help yourself. Thanks. Real Havana. I hope you enjoy it. Fingers? Fingers? I'm sorry, mister. You must think I'm somebody else. Oh, no, I don't. I have known you and your work for a long time. I tell you, you've got me pegged wrong. You've got your wires crossed. I don't think so. Don't worry. I'm your friend. Step into my private office. I want to show you something very interesting. What about this? Hey, that's me. What are you doing with this? Never mind. So you are, Fingers Dolan. All right, all right, so you know me. What's the gimmick? It must have been very hard on you to be inactive for such a long time. But that is all in the past. A great plans for you. Yes, Carl. Hello, Doc. Uh, send Mr. Stratton up immediately when he arrives. Yes.
出た Hi, Doc. The boss is waiting for you, Stratton. Did you bring my package? Where is it? No, I forgot to pick it up. But you promised me. I gotta have it. Oh, lay off, you rum dum. Here it is. I, I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thanks, Stratton. Thanks for what? That stuff is slow death. No, it isn't. I'm a doctor. I know. Doctor, my eye. I wouldn't let you treat a good case of dandruff. Can you see, Mr. Stratton? I'm sure many things will become clear to you. Fingers Dolan! Trigger! I thought you were still doing time. Glad to see you, son. What are you doing here? Mr. Stratton works for me. You see, I like to bring all friends together. Stratton, huh? Yeah. Got a new moniker. There is more than a new name in it for you if you join our little partnership. Look, you birds. I know I'm not as quick as I used to be. But these, these are still quick, aren't they? Sure. Are we going to crack a box tonight? Mr. Stratton, don't be so crude. You mean you lay out a job, chase the place, and I tune the dial? The language is rather picturesque, but the meaning is perfect. And there's nobody like Carl for his end of the job. How do you like that? A flop house for a blind. Well, you guys had me coming and going. Work, fingers. For a minute, I thought I lost the magic touch. Okay. Fingers, it's his job. Now it's your turn, Stratton. Fingers? You heard what I said. But he's a valuable man. He was a valuable man. Hey, are you guys kidding with that talk or what? Do your job, Stratton. But Carl, I... lost your nerve. Go ahead. Please. Please don't kill me. Give me your chance. I only did it you asked me to. I can show you... Oh. trouble? No trouble at all. Everything was perfect. You act like there's something bothering you. Didn't you get a big haul? I told you everything was perfect. We got a swell haul. I still say there's something bothering you. Is it that new man, Fingers? No. Fingers won't bother anybody anymore. You mean to say he got rid of him without letting me have the body? He can't do that to me. He promised me. It seems he can do anything he pleases. Didn't you get a big enough cut from this last job? I'm not griping about the cut. You know, Doc, that Fingers was a good man. What's to stop him from getting rid of us in the same way? Carl wouldn't do that. He's our friend. <laughs> Maybe your friend. Me? I'm getting fed up. You know, it ain't healthy to talk like that. I don't scare so easy. Some of these days I'm going to tail him and see what he does during the day. A couple of men tried that before you and now they're buried. Come 
your breakfast, little boy. Go on. Now say good morning to Mommy. Good morning. <laughs> Come on, say good morning. How about feeding a hungry husband? Certainly, darling. And I have a surprise for you this morning. And I have a surprise for you, too. You finished your book? Oh, another present. To remind you of my love. Oh. They are beautiful. Just like you, my dear. But they must have cost an awful lot. Nothing is too good for you, my darling. How can you afford to give me such expensive gifts and so often? To what better use could I put the money from my writing? You should save your money. It's not jewels I want. It's you, your companionship. Frederick, I get so lonesome at times. Why do you have to stay away from me night after night? How much longer are we going on like this? Not long, my dear. Research for my new book will be finished soon. And then we go far away from here. Good morning, Miss Beers. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, there is nothing more invigorating than a nice, cool drink of fresh mountain spring water. Mr. Atlas, every morning for three years, you start out with the same stimulating conversation. Sometimes I think I'll scream. series of robberies is definitely the work of a homicidal maniac. Leaving the body of an accomplice on each job proves that. Some of your uniform men are up for promotion. It's up you to earn it. As far as the plain clothes men are concerned, they better be on their toes or they'll find themselves back in uniform. That's all. Uh, Mac was sure letting off steam, wasn't he? You ever see an Irishman that didn't? <laughs> oh, I'm going to be missing all this soon. Say, you start drawing that pension next month, don't you? Yep. I kind of hate to retire, but of course it'll be nice being home without those kids yelling cheese at the cat. Kids. How I love them. You know, Mark, someday I'm going to have a dozen. Yeah? Well, you know you're happy to get married first, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I am if I ever get that promotion. You will, son. You'll be a detective before you know it. When that happens, I'm going to buy a little place in the country just like yours. Work in the garden. And... Yeah? Well, you know, you've no idea how being a detective will help you catch them going. <laughs> <laughs> be seeing you, Peter. So long, Mark. The study of abnormal psychology recognizes paranoia as one of the most dangerous types of insanity. Perhaps Mr. Dennison can inform the class why paranoia is so dangerous. Well, the patient suffers from delusions of grandeur. He thinks he's very important, way above those around him. He has a superiority complex. Is that all? No, it's also coupled with a persecution mania, caused by an intense feeling that everyone's against him. So far, you're correct. But you haven't explained why such cases are dangerous. Well, I guess it's because he acts logically. If you didn't study him, you wouldn't know he was maladjusted. And he doesn't hesitate to use force to assert his personality. This leads to an antisocial conduct. Then, Mr. Dennison, I take it you imply they might even enjoy a life of crime?
Eat? How about a nice corned beef sandwich? Well, that's a deal, but this time the treat's on me. Goldberg's? Goldberg's it is. Which Frankie Mills? Don't mind me, Pete. Get after him. He's your promotion. Sergeant Crawford, give me Captain Mitchell right away. Come in. I'm sorry, Mr. Wagner. I didn't mean to disturb you. Oh, you never disturbed me. What is it, Judy? Well, I thought I'd consult you before ordering those supplies. Uh, if we need them, get them regardless of cost. Those unfortunate souls depend upon us. We must not fail them. I thought you'd see it that way. I'll attend to it at once. Better let me take care of that for you. I can take care of it. It might become infected. Let me clean and bandage it for you. Oh, don't worry. I won't hurt you. Right this way. Come on. Now, if you'll just sit down here, I'll fix you up right away. How did this happen? The guy sliced me with a knife. He tried to take my dough. That's too bad. This will sting just a little bit. There, that didn't hurt much, did it? It don't hurt at all, Eddie. Very well. Let me know when he gets here. There. There's some nice hot soup out there, that is, if you care for any. Thanks. Bill, you and Joe take a look in the pool hall. Yes? 
What can I do for you? Keep your mouth shut. Well, if it isn't Frankie Mills. It's too bad you recognize me, mister. What's the matter? Are the police after you? Yeah. And you better not do anything to upset this baby. Don't worry. I will not betray you. Yes? Who is there? Police. Open up. Uh, just a moment, please. You stay inside here. Good evening, Sergeant. You make a habit of keeping this door locked? Oh, just a precaution. You see, otherwise my guests would be all over the place. Is there something wrong? Yes, yeah, there's a dangerous killer loose somewhere in the neighborhood. Really? We've got orders to search all these Bowery places. I'd be glad to show you around. What's up there? Uh, just a dormitory. Couple of you boys see what you can find upstairs. Is there anything wrong? Yes, the police is looking for someone and thought he might be hiding here. He's a young fellow by the name of Frankie Mills. About 23 years old, medium height and dark hair. Baby face. Why, a man of that description was here a few minutes ago. He was? Are you sure? I'm positive. I bandaged his injured wrist. Where did he go? Well, if he isn't out there, I guess he must have gone. Thank you. No sign of him up there. You folks keep your eyes open. If you see him again, notify police headquarters immediately. Certainly. I'd be happy to cooperate with the police. All right, boy. Yes, Mother. But I can't leave now. Well, all right. I'll be home in about an hour. You can't relax now. Your friends are gone. Who are you? What are you soft-soaping me for? Because I have a proposition that I think you will like. Let's hear it. What do you do? Make this stuff? No. This represents the difference between my intelligence and the dull minds of my fellow men. What case was that? Just my house phone. Hello? Tell him to wait. I'll be right down. How would you like to join my organization? Sure. Why not? My associate is downstairs. I want you to meet him. Hello. Staten? I want you to meet Frankie Mills. Frankie Mills, huh? No wonder the neighborhood is full of cops. This is my janitor. What's the matter with him? He's afraid of you, naturally. The way I like it. What are you afraid of? Don't get gay, kid, just because you're handy with the heater. It seems we all have our little fears. All but you, Frankie. You wouldn't believe it, Stratton, but I am afraid of you. <laughs> That's a hot... Don't laugh. I'm afraid of you because you lost your nerve. What'd I do? Thank you. If you want Stratton's job, you can have it now. Don't fall for that line of talk, kid. He'll cross you like he has everybody else.
You're not afraid of them now, are you? Good work, Frankie. What are you going to do with the stiff? You shall see. Take care of Mr. Stratton. Dormitory of the dead. I never saw a guy with more angles. Hmm. These mildewed skeletons who sleep so quietly now were once my partners, like Stratton. Duck, how often have I told you to keep that cat from desecrating my graves? Let's go, Frankie. Our place is not with the dead. Their work is done. How is it just beginning? Don't take too long, Doc. Is that guy a real doctor? Yes. Once he was a, a great doctor. Now he's just a human derelict. Just a derelict, eh? And still a great doctor. And I'll prove it. Save you, Stratton. Save you from the dead. Then you belong to me. Oh, please, Richard. You'll be home any moment now. Always late. Why can't she be on time just once? Well, you know, Judy, time is not her own these days. Mrs. Malvern, when are you going to put a stop to all this? Why can't you stay away from that place? Well, after all, Richard, you're the one that can make her understand. You think so? I have a doubt with her. I'm certain you can prove to her which is more important. You or that uh, Carl or whatever his name is who runs that awful place on the Bowery. I'll try. Oh, Richard, you're a dear boy. <laughs> oh, it'll make me the happiest woman in the world. <laughs> well, how's cozy? Judy. Maybe I'd better leave. Judy. I want to talk to you. And I suppose Mother will be the interpreter. Judy Malvern, what's come over you? Richard has been waiting patiently for over an hour to see you. Of course, what is it? Good night, Mom. Sit down, Arlene. Won't you please sit down? Oh, this won't take very long. Now, what have you to tell me that's so important? Judy, I, I want you to give up that silly job. Saving humanity, it's ridiculous. And I suppose I should spend the rest of my life on your yacht. Oh, I'm not asking so much, considering that... Considering what? Considering that I don't want my future wife wasting her time and Your I... future what? Mm-hmm. I practically told your mother already. I suppose you'd be a good little boy and run along. Come back tomorrow and tell my mother I think you're both having hallucinations. Okay. See now how you feel about it? Let's forget it. Oh, Richard... I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I guess it's just because I'm, I'm so tired. That's just it. You stop working down at that mission and take stock of yourself. Judy, do you realize you've given up your friend, your social life, everything? For what? I for the opportunity of helping the underprivileged. You should be proud of me for that, Richard. Proud of you? For working in the Bowery? <laughs> well, that's no place for a girl like you. And that Wagner who runs the place. What about him? Well, I'd like to meet him, that's all. You and Mr. Wagner have nothing in common. Nothing, except you. Oh, so that's it. I never thought of that. You see, it's true. I knew there was another reason for you and Carl spending half your nights down there. You've no idea what a mysterious fondness I have for that man. No mystery to me. You're infatuated with it. So you found out. Do you really believe that? Sure I do. Go ahead and have all the fun you want. You and your social work. Yeah. 
Oh. Up, darling. Yes. What is? You were having one of those horrible nightmares again. Yes. Is there anything I can get you? A glass of water, maybe? Thank you. No, dear. Go back to bed. You sure? Mm-hmm. Good night. Good night, darling. Oh. Yes? I'd like to ask a question, if I may. Certainly. Well, it's about my term paper. I suddenly realize that I know very little about real people. Hmm. What gave you that idea? Well, after all, you can't learn about life cruising around on a yacht. You see, I was thinking of writing on what a man thinks just before he dies. It's very unscientific. That's what I mean. So with your permission, I'd like to change to a paper on the psychology of the underprivileged. Very interesting. If you feel qualified to handle it, by all means, make that your subject. Thanks a lot, Professor. Sergeant Crawford reporting. You uh, sent for me, sir? I did. Crawford, I want you to turn in your shield. Turn in my shield? You heard me. By the time Johnny Martin recovered, he'll be on the retired list. I requested a shield be given to you. I trust you know your first assignment. You bet I do. Good luck, boy. Thank you. Who'd have thought yesterday that I'd be working with Frankie Mills on a high-class job? Yes, each day brings its little surprises. I meet you later, Frankie. You know where. I'll be all set. You have the idea now, haven't you? Oh, sure. We cover Frankie's getaway from here. It's a natural. That's right. Gee, you're smart to figure all this out. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mister. You'll have to keep moving. Just keep on. George, you come with me. Hurry, Sergeant. I've been robbed. I can feel the hot breath of the outraged public on my neck. These crimes are a disgrace to the city and a menace to our citizens. You'll have to produce results or resign. Chief is on the warpath. We've got to deliver the goods, or we'll all be pounding the pavement. I want the Bowery search from one end of the other. Yes, sir. Things are sure tough, aren't they? 
Well, how would you know, slummer? You wouldn't think it to look at me, but I'm down on my luck, too. <laughs> well, you wouldn't think to look at me that I'm rolling in dough, would you? Say, bud, got a cigarette? Sure. Hey, aren't you forgetting something? Yeah, you got a match? Yeah. Hey, um, mind answering a few questions? Why don't you run up and down Park Avenue? Go on, beat it. Hello, Sonny. Anything I can do for you? Yes, I want to try that suit on in the window. Of course you can try it on, but not in the window. In the back. Oh, that's a nice piece of material. What's the matter with the one you got on? Uh, I need some old clothes. Uh, can you make me look like a tramp? Can you imagine that? He wants to look like a tramp since he's coming into my place. Listen, Sonny, I want you to understand this is a first-class establishment. How much is that suit? You want to rent or buy? I want to buy. A cash customer. Why don't you say so in the first place? Thank you, Moe. You're welcome. Richard, what on earth are you doing here? Judy, you'll give me away. Where did you get that suit? I sold our yacht. Is this your idea of a joke? Look, Judy, I want you to help me. I'm going to write a term paper on the psychology of the underprivileged. Underprivileged? Why don't you try the millionaire club? I'm on the level, Judy. Remember what you said last night? I've been giving a lot of thought. I think that... I'm sorry, but you'll have to move on. I'll talk to you later. What kind of people are letting them here nowadays? Hey, look at this. Not bad. Not bad at all. The Astapils announced the coming out of their daughter. Coming out. Coming out of what? Well, I guess they keep their kids locked up. Oh. What's the matter? Are you literate or something? Come on, let's get to a clean table. Professor, what are you doing here? I beg your pardon? You mean to say that you're not Professor Brenner? Brenner? I'm afraid you're mistaken, young man. Look, Professor, I'd know you any place. Come in. I see it is useless to try to deceive you, Mr. Tennyson. You must be here for the same reason I am, to do some research. You're right. But I intend to keep it a secret until I am ready to reveal my findings. You don't have to worry about me, Professor. I can keep the secret. I have no doubt about that. What did you bolt the door for? Oh, so we will not be disturbed. You see, Mr. Dennison, I'm conducting this rescue mission for the purpose of studying men. I'll bet you gathered some wonderful material. Indeed I have. Would you like me to show you around? That would be great, Professor. Come. Step in. This is my private office. Here you will find a world of valuable information. Well, I imagine I could. Let's be going to that later. First, I would like you to meet some very interesting characters. Mr. Mills, I want you to know Mr. Dennison. Oh, yes. Glad to know you. This man is an interesting study in psychosis. I suppose you have never met a, a homicidal maniac before. You mean he's a 
What are you talking about? Ask Frank some question. Well, I, I don't know where to begin. Ask if it gives him pleasure to take human life. You, uh, you enjoy killing people? Sure, when they get in my way. <laughs> Come. Over here, you will see a perfect specimen of schizophrenia. Back. Get up. Would you like to question him? I guess not. I see you're losing your enthusiasm, Mr. Dennison. Perhaps I should ask you your own question. What question? The one you brought up this morning in the classroom. You see what fear does to one's memory? This morning you wanted to know what a man thinks about just before he dies. That's unscientific. You said yourself you can't ask a dead man. But you can ask yourself, Mr. Dennison. You must be joking. <laughs> Frankie Mears doesn't joke. Do you, Frankie? You can't be serious. This, this is like a crazy nightmare. Think. You have 30 seconds to answer that question. I'm getting out of here. I'm afraid not, Mr. Dennison. Think. Please, Professor. What are you thinking? You're mad. Insane. All right, thank you. Don't! It's all yours, Doc. How are you, my pets? Hungry, eh? Well, you shall have food and a new companion, too. Judy? Judy? Oh, what time is it? Well, it's only nine o'clock. I woke you because Mrs. Dennison just phoned. Richard didn't come home last night, and the whole family is frantic. They thought perhaps you might have seen him. I did see him last night. Where? Your important Mr. Dennison came into the nation last night, dressed like a tramp. Richard did that? Why, I can't believe it. Nevertheless, it's true. Well, I'll call her back, and you talk to her. I don't know why she's in such a divot. I meet dozens of men every night who've been missing for years. Nobody gets excited over them. Hello, Mrs. Dennison. This is Judy. I just wanted to tell you not to worry about Richard. Yes, he was doing research in the Bowery last night. Oh, Judy! The Bowery? Oh, how can you say he's all right in a place like that? But nothing could possibly happen to him down there. But I don't think that's necessary. Just a minute. She wants me to go to the police. Well, perhaps you'd better, dear. But it's so ridiculous. We'll do it just to make her feel better. All right, Mrs. Dennison. I'll go. Young Dennison explained why he came to the mission. And he said he was studying types, doing research work for a college thesis. Tell me, Miss Malvern, how well do you know this fellow that runs the mission, Carl Wagner? Quite well. Why do you ask? Because Dennison and Frankie Mills were last seen in Wagner's mission. Oh, but, but surely you don't suspect that Mr. Wagner had anything to do with their disappearance? Well, I don't know. But I intend to find out. Crawford, you better drop around and see Mr. Wagner right away. Right. He's there only at night. Where is he during the day? I really don't know. But Captain Mitchell, couldn't something be done about it right away? We're doing everything as humanly possible, Mrs. Dennison. Crawford, you better follow through on this case. Yes, sir, and if it's uh, all right, I'd like to take Thompson with me. Good enough. Thank you. Will you pardon me? Of course.
That him, lady? No. That him? No. Charlie. Why, Judy. Did you know him? Yes. Yes, he was staying at the mission. What happened to him? This one fell from a tall building. How dreadful. Across the street from the jewelry store, just as it was being robbed. I'll see if I can get you a copy. Pardon me, is this Professor Brenner's office? Why, yes, it is. May I see him? Oh, I'm sorry, he isn't in. I believe he just left for home. I wonder if you'd give me his home address. Well, I can't give out that information. I'm Detective Crawford from police headquarters. I wanted to talk to the professor about uh, one of his students, Richard Dennison. Oh, I see. Well, just a minute and I'll give it to you. Here you are. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. All right, Thompson. Oh, Professor, I thought you'd gone home. There were two men here to see you, policemen. Police? Yes, they just left. I'll try and stop Never them. mind. Did they say what they wanted? Well, they wanted to talk to you about Richard Dennison. I gave them your home address. Was that all right? Yes. It's quite all right. Mrs. Brenner? Yes. We'd like to talk to your husband. He isn't home, but I'm expecting him any moment. Won't you please come in? Why, yes, thank you. I'm uh, Detective Crawford, and this is Detective Thompson. Detective? Oh, don't be alarmed. We uh, merely want to question the professor about one of his students. Oh, I see. Won't you please be seated? Thank you. Is uh, this the professor? Yes. A lovely picture, don't you think? Yes, it is. Thompson. Where have you seen him before? Why, that's Carl Wagner, down in the Bowery. Or his double. What are you saying? Mrs. Brenner, have you ever had reason to suspect your husband of leading a double life? That's ridiculous. My husband is a famed psychologist. That's only the half of it. This man is also known as Carl Wagner, and he operates a mission in the Bowery, the one where Richard Dennison was last seen. That explains his nightly absences from home. The expensive jewelry. And those horrible nightmares. I'm uh, sorry, Mrs. Brenner, but we'll have to take you to headquarters for questioning. I understand. I'm quite willing to go. I get my hat and coat. Captain Mitchell, this is Pete Crawford. I'm at the Brenner home. You'd better prepare yourself for a thunderbolt. I've just discovered that Professor Brenner is none other than Carl Wagner of the Friendly Mission. That's right, and we're bringing Mrs. Brenner in for questioning. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Thompson, you'd better run her in. I uh, think I'll stay here and pick up the professor. It's taking long enough to get that coat. Mrs. Brenner. Oh, Mrs. Brenner.
again. There, I blitzed you again. That's seven times in a row. Afternoon, Miss Judy. Good afternoon, boy. Getting to work kind of early, ain't you? I have things to do. Say, have you seen Mr. Wagner around? No, ma'am, I ain't. Thanks. Doc. Hello, Miss Judy. Well, what is this? Where did you come from? I can't tell you that. Why not? Carl would kill me. You mustn't let him know you've even seen it. Oh, don't be fantastic. Why, Carl wouldn't hurt anybody. I, I know that. I mean, he, he just wouldn't like it. Well, well, I'm your friend, Doc. You know you can trust me. I know that, Miss Judy. And I want you to do me a favor. Why, I'll be glad to. If you show me what's behind that bookcase. No, no, I mustn't. Carl wouldn't like it. What was it you wanted me to do? I want you to get a prescription filled for me. Will you? Right away. It comes in small bottles. What do you want this for? It's good for me. I, I'm a doctor. I know what's good for me. If I get this filled, will you show me what's in there? If you keep it a secret and get it for me right away. All right. You stay here. I'll be right back. What do you got? Ah, oh, that's another thousand I owe you. That's six G's all together you owe me. What do you mean six? Five. Six. Five. Trying to make a liar out of me for a crummy thousand. Why, I'll take you and... Will you do me a favor, please? Sure, Miss Judy. Run down to the drugstore and get this prescription filled. Yes, ma'am. Where to? <sighs> Sorry to break up your game. But he'll be back soon. Oh, that's all right. You just saved me five thousand dollars. I sent one of the boys after it. Come on now, open up. Don't you ever tell a soul. Let's go back now. What's behind that door? It's just a little closet where I keep brooms and things. It's only my cat. But you can't keep it locked up like that. Well, she likes it in there. Don't be silly. She's crying, poor thing. Open the door. I, I can't. You must go now, Miss Judy. Not until you let the cat out. No, no. You must go back. You want that prescription filled, don't you? Huh. Never say a word about this.
did you allow her to come down here? She had nothing to do with it. Be quiet. The police are right, you're a fiend. Richard Dennison did you no harm, and you, you killed him. What do you propose to do about it? Here is a little surprise for you, Frankie. You didn't tell me the gal was in on this deal. She is not. So you know what to do. Nothing doing. Don't tell me that you are getting sentimental. Killing women ain't a part of my racket. Do what you are told. Why don't you let her alone? She didn't do anything. Oh, shut up, you fool. Be careful, the girl, that I get the stuff. Outside. All right, you boys, stay out of here. No, outside, outside. place for you to hide, where no one will ever find you. Come with me. I prepared this for just such an occasion. Miss Malvern! Will work anywhere but the Bowery. Yes, Richard. We'll have six kids, three boys, and three girls. Yes, Richard. Come here. Can't you do anything besides say, yes, Richard? Yes, Richard. 